Hi there, Walksoners. I'm Jack, and this is DS1 Newscast. And recently, Universal officially unveiled Epic Universe in, to be honest, what was a very well put together introduction video on YouTube, and it's already got well over a million views. But just in case you haven't seen it already, I'll put a link to it down below in the description box. But basically, this was Universal kickstarting what is sure to be a massive marketing campaign, a year-long marketing push towards Epic Universe opening in 2025. But with all of that being said, I'm not here to just do a recap or what to expect from Epic Universe style of video, as to be honest with all of you, that's not my territory. Theme Park Stop YouTube channel has been covering this since before it was even known as Epic Universe. Alicia Stella has been doing phenomenal work over there, and I'll leave a link in the description box to all of that. However, with all that being said, this is DSMY Newscast, and so what I want to talk about is what could Disney possibly do at this point to try and respond to Epic Universe? And quite frankly, whether it would even be a thankless task in trying to attempt to respond to Epic Universe or something. As after all, 2025, and to be honest, 2026 as well most likely, is going to be the year of Epic Universe. It's going to be Universal's years as they're going to dominate with Epic Universe in terms of a conversation of the theme park industry. Once Epic Universe opens, that's all anyone's going to be talking about for 2025, the brand new theme park in Orlando. And being totally honest, from my perspective, this ship has sailed here. You know, Disney has been asleep at the wheel, they've dropped the ball, and they've only got themselves to blame in terms of not having anything ready to open in 2025 and 2026. Now, that isn't to say that they couldn't turn it around for 2027 and 2028. But as it currently stands, they've only got Tiana's Bayou Adventure this year. And then 2025 and 2026, they have nothing new to open at Walt Disney World, which leaves a massive gap in the market. And I know the thinking is most likely, you know, a rising tide will lift all ships. But I do think they also need to have something to offer the consumer that's going to be checking out Epic Universe. And they're going to be looking at Disney and they're going to be saying, well, there's not anything new over there. I've already seen everything that you've had to offer the last five years. So this D23 Expo, they need to get started on these projects ASAP. So therefore, in 2027, 2028, and 2029, they've got something to offer. And then, you know, the last five years has been all about the hype building up to Epic Universe. That's been Universal's time. But the next five years could be about Disney and what they've got to offer. But they've got to get going on these projects as soon as possible. As from 2015 to 2019, the hype train was all about Disney. It was about Toy Story Land, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and Pandora the World of Avatar. Everyone was talking about that. And Disney needs to get that kind of hype going about Walt Disney World again. Aiming for a period after, you know, 2025 and 2026. As they've ceded ground to Universal, those two years are going to be their years. But I think that Disney still needs to do something to remain in the game in the conversation for 2025 and 2026. And if we're looking at their arsenal at the moment of what they could do, the first thing is they could be more price competitive. They could offer some more competitive discounts. So therefore, you know, Universal is going to have to spend big advertising money to get the international visitors to come and see the brand new theme park in Orlando, Epic Universe. All the money that Universal and Comcast are going to be spending on this park, Disney could then slice some of that attention away and get those visitors to come and check out Walt Disney World as well if they are more price competitive. And there's certainly room for that at the moment. It's just a matter of whether they will actually go that direction. As after all, Disney Plus hasn't been making the money that it should. Disney's movies haven't been making the money that they should. And the only area of the Walt Disney Company that's really the big revenue generator at the moment is the parks and experiences business. It's making billions of dollars for the Walt Disney Company. And so it's a matter of how much of a discount they want to offer. But if you actually look at the existing prices of Disney and Universal and compare the two of them, you can see quite easily that Universal is considerably less expensive than Disney. But once you add Epic Universe into that equation, I think you're going to see those prices become a lot closer to each other. And so the gap in which Disney will have to discount will be a lot less. And so therefore you'll see a more price competitive sort of strategy there. But there's also the other direction they could go in this, and that is bringing back all the perks that they stripped away in the post-pandemic era. 
And I'm thinking about stuff like Magical Express, you know, free transportation from the airport to the hotel and hotel to the airport. That's a big deal. And if they brought that back, a lot of people would book a Walt Disney World vacation because they're getting these extras back. And this could extend to things like bringing back the dream lights for the castle at Christmas or paying tribute to the Osborne spectacle of dancing lights over at Grand Avenue, over at Hollywood Studios. As these things may seem small, but you'd be surprised just how much these kind of things matter to people. But probably the biggest thing that they could do is something like if you book a Disney hotel and stay on property, you get one free lightning lane per day per person. You know, you could do something like that, and that would go a long way to getting people to book Disney World vacations if they think that the, there's a softening in their attendance compared to Epic Universe. Now, that might be a strategy they might end up pulling out in 2026 if they see Epic Universe pulling some market share away from them, which I really do think Epic Universe might draw some of the market share away. You know, these massive immersive lands are being built over here and people are gonna to want to spend one or two days to check it out. And after all, people only have a certain set number of vacation days. They can't just endlessly add on more vacation days. So they're going to have to pick and choose where they want to spend their time. And they're obviously going to want to check out the hottest new thing in Orlando and that's Epic Universe. But in my opinion, I think there's actually more that Disney could do to stay in the conversation in 2025. And that is to open up up a smaller kind of attraction which obviously won't compete with the likes of Epic Universe and their over 10 new attractions and all that sort of stuff over there but it will be something that they could build an advertising campaign around and where I would do it would be Stitch's Great Escape. I would put a new attraction into Stitch's Great Escape into Magic Kingdom, the number one park for Walt Disney World and in the entire world. I would put a new attraction in there and then you can build an advertising campaign around that and I know a lot of people are going to say you know Disney these construction times they're ridiculous and being totally honest with you they are laughable you know Tron took five years to construct Epcot's transformation took longer than the construction of Epcot the actual park in the 1980s so you know it is laughable their construction times but in recent times back in 2017 they opened up Mission Breakout in Disneyland and that was a one year construction process from start to finish roughly so they could do something but it would involve them getting started on it as soon as possible and if they didn't think that they had enough time to construct a whole new attraction within that time then they could even do something like the long rumored Mandalorian and Grogu integration within Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run or create the alternative missions that were always meant to go into that attraction before it opened or along those lines perhaps even do an update to flight a passage where it takes us to new environments on the world of Pandora breathing new life into these existing attractions and then they'll have something ready to go in 2025 and then they could maybe get something going for 2026 as well on the smaller side of things just to build a marketing campaign around it but that would involve you know getting the money going in that direction and then the other thing they could do is they could turn towards entertainment to save the day and I think this is what they'll probably most likely end up doing and they'll really invest in the entertainment offering to try and boost their offerings for bookings in 2025 and 2026. Now, personally, what I would like to see them do is bring the Star Wars legacy characters of the original trilogy of, you know, Vader and Han and Luke and Leia and bring those to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. As then that way, you've brought this whole new lease of life to this brand new, you know, 14 acre land, which opened literally months before the whole world shut down with COVID. And so therefore you're bringing more attention back to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. And then you could add all the things which were originally scheduled for Galaxy's Edge in terms of droids and interactivity and characters and adding this kind of level of kineticism and, and making the world feel alive. You could do all of that in Galaxy's Edge and get the conversation talking about Galaxy's Edge all over again and get a double loss of marketing out of Galaxy's Edge and people would come and check it out. And you could also do that across the entirety of Walt Disney World and sort of make 2025 the year of character. You know, Walt Disney World is about character 
basically. They could make that the whole advertising campaign. And they could say, you know, alive with character and have it in Pandora, the world of Avatar, with off the back of Avatar 2, you know, the way of water, have some more character interaction there. You could have Toy Story Land with more character interaction, have the exclusive characters like Rex and Lotso, and maybe even have a Forky character and things like that over in Toy Story Land. You could have new spontaneous character meet and greets in Epcot and in Animal Kingdom and in Magic Kingdom. You could do all of this and relatively it would be less expensive than constructing a brand new attraction. Even though I do think they still need to do that, it would be a great way to make a whole advertising campaign and keep Disney World in the conversations. After all, Epic Universe, if you actually think about it from an advertising perspective, they're going to be talking all about their attractions. They're going to be talking all about the thrill of these attractions, the immersiveness of the lands. They're not going to be focusing nearly as much on the character aspect. And so if Disney focuses on live entertainment and how Walt Disney World is alive with character, I think that would keep them in the conversation. And then the other thing they could do from an entertainment perspective is commission a new daytime parade for Magic Kingdom to replace Festival of Fantasy and get going on that because they could have that ready to go next summer. And they could even do a nighttime parade, which has been long rumoured for Walt Disney World for a long time, and have that ready to go next year as well. And I think this would be a pretty good thing to lean into because it would draw more of a contrast between Disney and Epic Universe. As from the sounds of things, Epic Universe is going to have a fantastic nighttime spectacular within its central hub. But if you look at the concept art for Epic Universe and the layout, it doesn't seem like it's going to have a parade. And so if Disney did go ahead and make two new parades, then it would be something that they could highlight as being unique to them. And then those offerings would at least buy Disney a bit of time in 2025 and 2026 whilst everyone's checking out Epic Universe. They would also come over and check out the latest over at Walt Disney World. And then they could have something ready to go for 2027 and 2028 and beyond and have the rest of the time focused on them. So that's what I would do personally about 2025 and 2026 with the Epic Universe threat and how all the attention is going to be on Universal, rightfully so, because that park does look phenomenal. So that's what I would do. But now, obviously, it's over to you, the Waltoners, as I would love to know what are your thoughts and opinions on the current state of what they could do to compete or stay in the conversation at least against the likes of all the talk about Epic Universe in 2025 and 2026. What would you need to see from Disney to make it more of a compelling prospect in 2025 and 2026? And what do you think they will do? And with that being said, if you've enjoyed this video for today, then be sure to give this video a massive thumbs up. Share this video with a friend, check out the rest of the videos on the channel, subscribe down below, you know, all the usual YouTube things. And also, I'd like to say a massive thank you to the official Waltoneer Club over on Patreon. As all the members over there, I want to say a special thank you to all of you for helping support this channel for so long. And also a special thank you to the Waltoneer Gold members that you can see here on the screen, and also Waltoneer Diamond member as well, Kyle Mahan. And with all of that being said for today, I've been Jack, you've been you, and I'll see you real soon. Thank <laughs> you.